Welcome back to another episode of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, Diamond. What's up, dude? And on the sticks, we got TJ. Hello. And joining us today, we got Rob and Mark from Launch Punks and also Taxman from Ghosty Cash. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's good to have a, a powwow here. Like this is the, <laughs> the tap crew is like Avengers Assemble, right? So it feels like. Yeah, which or is, Power Rangers or whatever, <laughs> whatever era you come from. I thought you would have appreciated the Avengers. Yeah, I'm surprised you brought that up, dude, to be honest. <laughs> so it feels like it's, it's like happening. the Ninja Turtles are coming together. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. It's all cool, right? <laughs> yeah, it's good to have, like, a, you know, because we were talking off cam. It's like we spent the last year, you know, we talk about everything in this space on this channel as much as we can. But obviously TAP is like an underlying, like, permanent fixture in, like, what we find interesting for a lot of good reasons, right? Like, we're Metaverse developers, so we need access to like an actual protocol in Bitcoin that can enable a lot of certain features that we need on our end. Right. Yeah. So, but with that understanding, it's like, Hey, you know, we're developers at some point, this protocol is going to like bring in a ton of other developers who want to do other interesting things outside of like the scope of the metaverse, right. Things like DeFi, you know, so it's really good to have you guys come in here and kind of like es essentially represent that, that the other extension of what TAP protocol is all about. And just to kind of like individually, I guess, educate the the Bitcoin aware that all these things are actually on the horizon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, so I guess the first question here is we got the platform launch punks and then we have ghosty cash. So I, I guess um, let's start with launch punks first. Do you want to talk about your platform, Rob and Mark and um, you know, how, how people are going to using it and, you know, how you came about launch punks. Sure. Do you want to kick oh. it off? Oh. Well, yeah, we'll um, so me and Rob have known each other from uh, trading over many years. Um, now we've, we've both used a lot of launch pads over the, uh, the years, last bull cycle, specifically the last bull cycle. We saw a, a real need for a shake up on the, the the way that launch pads were done, um, unfortunately, they favour for the people that have got the majority of tokens and the biggest wallet. So that's when we just said, you know, we stopped using launch pads because we thought they were unfair. Um, as soon as you get into a bull run, the tokens for the launch pad are right up there, and there's, you just never win a, an allocation. So we we come up with the idea of launch punks. Uh, after speaking to um, some of the people at TAP, we was convinced that this was the new place to be. Uh, we'd already invested in some uh, ordinal um, NFTs and also some tokens early doors. So we decided this was the place to build. And now Benny's our savior. And we're, we're all in on TAP, just like yourselves. This is This is where to build. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, early on we were we were looking for some sort of functionality that we can leverage to kind of build out, you know, whatever it is that we wanted to build at the time. And the only developer out there that was, you know, kind of speaking our language was Benny. And uh, we found Benny pretty early on, and we knew what he was building was uh, was very very important. Um, and so I, I think you guys found the same thing um, in, in the whole TAP ecosystem. So it totally makes sense. Um, for for Taxman, Ghosty Cash, um, we had interviewed you guys in the past about a, about a year ago. Maybe like 10 to 11 months ago, roughly. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, do you want to introduce Ghosty Cash and the platform and, and talk about the spooky token that's about to uh, to launch here? Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me on, guys. Uh, so firstly, I'll keep it very simple. Ghosty Cash is a bridging protocol that has an anonymous feature. So we allow you to go from any chain, most chains on crypto, very easily and anonymously in one click. And very fast, about 10 to 15 minutes in most cases. Uh, so that's just a gist for new people that are here. We've been operating for about, today's actually our one-year anniversary, oh, exactly wow. today. That's um, so we've been live for exactly one year, and we have swapped just over 51 million. I think last time we spoke to you guys, we were on like 2 million swapped. So you've wow. come a long way yeah. and the platform is doing good. We're just getting a hang of things. We've got everything under control now and we've decided to move to our 
token utility, right? So we've got a new token coming out, which is called Spooky, S-P-K-Y. Mm. Uh, it's going to be a tap token. Uh, and our plan with this token is to give back to the communities. So we've had people that have been holding our token for a long, long time, right? And he wanted to see how we can reward them. So we've got two key utilities that I'd say are coming out and then a few side ones as well. Number one would be the revenue share, which is the most important. Uh, with that revenue share, you stake your spooky token and you get rewarded in native assets like Bitcoin. And that's Bitcoin on the main net, no wrap. You don't do none of the wrap stuff and stuff like that. We just give you Bitcoin and that comes from our revenue. So whatever you make, we take half uh, and we allocate that to the staking pool and the users get, uh, whoever stake gets half of that. And the fun part is if you stay, let's say we have a staking term of six months, right? We stake your spooky for six months and you can claim your Bitcoin every single month. You can use it elsewhere. You can uh, put your capsule to memes, whatever you want to do. It's your money. Go play with that. Have fun. You know, we don't lock up your money for the entirety of the bull run. Uh, and that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is we have a buy bot coming. So for every $100 swapped, we're going to take half the spook and we're going to burn. It. This is going to be done by our fees from our other features. Multi-sender. We have a perp dex, which also revenue is gener uh, generates revenue. We have a... Uh, we have our team pot as well, which we are dedicating to the buy bot. So it's going to be constantly buying back supply from the market and uh, burning it, removing it from the uh, circulation. So suppressing supply. The reason we want to do this is because we think our token actually has real value when it gives people Bitcoin, which is considered the mother chain, something that's in price discovery right now, especially the way the world is going. I think Bitcoin is going to go much higher and is going to have a lot of value in the future. Mm -hmm. So we see our token as gold, I would say. Uh, if you're earning something that is here to stay, then the token's value appreciates naturally, right? And we want to minimize the supply of our token in the market. So pe the people that own it, they get rewarded more for holding the token. Uh, and that's pretty much it mainly. We have a few new, uh, new functions coming out that I will brush over. We don't have stuff ready at the moment, um, but I will brush over them towards the end of the call about what we have coming up. And then you'll see how the token plays into that. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that uh, because we have both of your platforms on, on this chat, that uh, the Spooky token is going to be launching on LaunchMonks. Is that correct? That is correct. We are working with our partners. Uh, they're also on TAP protocol. You know, if you have mutuals, you are, we are, and they are as well. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, spoke to them. We like what they're doing. We feel like, uh, you know, we're all about community. Our revenue comes from community. So we prioritize uh, our community a lot because if they stop swapping, there's no point for our platform. And they actually believe in the same thing where they put, uh, they just want to smash this establishment, right? So I think we have aligned views. And that's where we were like, you know, let's work together. Let's make this happen. And Launch punks as ex ghosty on the 18. Oh, hell yeah. That's crazy. So, um, th I guess, Rob, do you want to talk about like, is this the first launch on launch punks? It will be, yeah. We're going live, uh, with ghosty on Monday. So it'll be, oh, wow. It'll Monday. Be, um, yeah. We're not launching our token yet, but we're up uh, as our platform. So go live. It's Monday. So, okay. What are the steps that <clears throat> of preparation? Because this is going to be posted Saturday, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, this a couple of days before this launch. Yeah, a couple of days after this is posted, this this will be launching. Yeah. So, what are the steps to actually like participate in this TG? Well, um, you'll come to our site, um, connect the wallet, and uh, you'll need you need some points to participate. Um, you can get points by um, linking your email address to your wallet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you, if you want to buy an allocation, you'll need to KYC. Um, so that's another way you can earn points. Basically, it's a points-based platform. So um, you uh, get points, you put them into the project, and then um, you go on the leaderboard. And then uh, we run an allocation round. And the people who are higher up in the leaderboard, um, they get a better chance of winning, and they can get a bigger allocation too. Mm. Is there a so way instead of tiers, um, instead of tiers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's sort of player versus player. I see. Mm -hmm. Are any points being accrued by participating? Like, uh... yes. So um, we've integrated um, with uh, social media platforms, with uh, Twitter, Telegram, and Discord, and you can um, earn points by, say, retweeting stuff, or um, there'll be activities in the project, and so you can boost your score from that. And the longer you're in the project, um, your your score within that leaderboard goes up sort of every hour. So the earlier you get in, you sort of yeah, you're rewarded for your time in there as well. Um, 
then when the project finishes, when the when the um, campaign finishes for the project, we run the allocation round, and any points you've earned in the project, you get to keep, and you can use them towards the next project. Mm. Yeah. yeah, one one of the key factors we've um, we've got on it is the fact that a, a a project is built around its community. That's yeah. why we love Ghosty Cash. Without your community, you're nothing. Your community drives the price of your token. It drives the marketing for you. So what we're trying to do is integrate that into our platform. So mm. if Ghostly Cash have got a particular product a month later that they want to push the marketing on, we can put that particular tweet, uh, comment, share, retweet, and we can put a points to it. Mm. So no longer is it just everybody wants the community to tweet, to get the word out for free. We're not doing that. We're rewarding them with points. So the more active they are with our, our community and the projects that launch with us, the better chance they have of winning an allocation. So we're rewarding the people and their activities on ours. Um, that's where we think that we're going to benefit the actual communities as well as benefiting the projects. Mm -hmm. How does the... Like, what are the metrics that your systems are looking out for on social media? Is it like just the engagement metrics is what determines point allocation or is there some way to determine like quality of posts, something like that? Like, uh, what does the mechanism actually look like? Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's simple. It's like, um, uh, the, um, there'll be some activities set up ahead of time and they'll be available for people to do. And um, they can be timed activities as well, so they can happen within a window. So if a project wants something, they want some um, retweets mm -hmm. on a certain day, we can set the, an activity to open at that day, you know. And then, uh, so so it's all integrated. So you click a button, yeah, and then, um, you know, you'll retweet it and get your points, basically. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so essentially you've, you've sort of uh, gamified the uh, community interaction on, on Twitter. Is it is it... Twitter only supported on your platform? There's um, Twitter, there's Telegram, and there's Discord. The um, Discord and Telegram integrations are, are, are just basic to start with, but we've got a few different um, um, activities you can do in, in Twitter. There's okay. scope there. Okay. There's scope there to um, to do more. Okay, that makes sense. So you've you've essentially gamified like social interaction for, um, I guess, claiming points so that you have a higher chance to to win in in the next TGE. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, and and for the projects, it's um, you know, the, we brought the um, sort of uh, sort of Web two style marketing campaign into the sort of launch pad as well. So, so it's sort of a, I guess you get two in one really from that perspective. Do you guys do anything for like, uh, I guess like bot farming on on Twitter at all? Like, do you do any sort of checks or anything like that? It will be um, it was so so you have to link an account um so you, you'll need an account um and uh to to but to pay for an allocation you know it's, it's a, a legally we need to kyc people so i see yeah, you know good point, good point so you have to have kyc the account you can link one one um social media account you know um that that social media account it can't be linked to more than one wallet I see. and also um we let people change their social media accounts but uh, only once every 14 days so this is to stop people just farming and sort of gaming it because mm. it'd be very easy to set up a wallet and then just disconnect and reconnect your twitter account to loads of different wallets so we've made sure and um you need points so you need to you need to put your points into a project to start doing these activities as well I so see. one of the things we didn't want is just basically just people botting it and you know yeah. we want we want we want quality engagement so do you do you spend the points or do you uh like stake the points or or like um how do you how do you leverage these points like per project so um the points when 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 we launch our token um you'll be able to get points by locking our token up um so that'll be that'll be the, the main utility of our token um and then the extra points you can earn so the idea is instead of having a tiered system you know we've got a points based system you don't have to buy 3000 tokens and state them to get into tier 1 mm -hmm. you know you buy the tokens you can afford you get the points that you get for those tokens and then um you can you can start building up your profile you know if you if you if you um don't have that much money mm -hmm. um you know to invest then you can you can start building up your profile and then you know maybe after a couple of months you can be competing with 
um, you know, the bigger wallets for those allocations. So it's about rewarding users over time for their loyalty to our platform. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. And also... one of the things, one of the things that um, I didn't like about launch pads in the last cycle was basically you get, you, you get your, you get into your tier, you go and you do the raise and then there's nothing else to do once you're there. It's like, okay, well now what, you know, yeah, so you wanted basically... to make a, something that was interesting for people to come back to just yeah. on its own, you know, yeah, so you basically uh, you get into your tier and you you mint in inside that tier for that particular project, and then you essentially just wait for the next one, and uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I, I like what you guys are doing because you're sort of creating an incentive for people to interact, um, you know, uh, on a per project basis. So it makes a lot of sense, and it's evening out the playing field in a sense, yeah. right? Where it's not yeah. just like uh... it's like just like collect as much tokens as you can. And then all of a sudden you're always on tier one for every single. Yeah. Like if you only, if you have like the financial means to do so, right. right. There's, there's other ways to kind of other activities that are relevant to, to compete like, to for an ecosystem. That's yeah. literally in it's like birth stages. Yeah. Yeah. It's more than just like, you know, you know, uh, aggregating capital as some sort of indication of, of, of like a, a community, right. Obviously, actually having like organic interest in people like who just want to allocate their time investment essentially right it's something yeah. as equal to if not more valuable than capital itself agreed yeah and something we all can kind of like expense right we all have the capability of that so that's important you say putting those two variables like in the same playing field it i think it has the opportunity to attract a pretty large demographic of people right to be participants in this so it's interesting that that is a good like starting point to kind of like onboard a lot of interest specifically towards like tap projects that are launching through launch punks and such. Um, it's just kind of have like a perpetual engine of like interest and engagement and such for the next projects following up. So what is the actual process to get, you know, beyond ghosty cash, like, you know, how long of a campaign as a project do you need to kind of like initiate this? Is it like a one month thing, a multi month thing? What is the, uh, process to kind of onboard new projects and then aggregate this community engagement on top of that. Yeah, well, obviously Ghost of Cash is the first one. Um and they've come to us. They they've got quite a tight deadline to actually get to market. So what yeah. we would normally do is when the platform was up running, we've got a, a large marketing campaign coming near enough as soon as we got to market. Because what, what we've seen is if you do a bit of marketing a week before, people notice you, but then forget about you and then don't come on the day that you... You'll know it from Mscribe. If you don't remind them on the day and push on the day, people don't come and interact. So the main drive is going to be slightly over the weekend and then a massive push on Monday. Mm -hmm. But going to the future projects... So let's say a project, say like Foxy wanted to come to us mm -hmm. and they might not be launching till Q1, Q2. I don't actually know. Mm -hmm. um, what we would do then is we would set up a campaign with them. How yeah. many points do you want to be giving to the users? Because we can't have Ghosty Cash giving 20,000 points in prizes to each user and then Foxy coming and giving a million points to mm -hmm. each user. Mm -hmm. So we've got to keep it fair so that it's, it, you know what I mean, everyone's compensated correctly. But then they could say that they've got a milestone here, 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 and state when they want the new developments that they've done. Uh, say like when they did the uh, DMT Mint with yourselves, mm -hmm. that is when they could have said, look, I know we're not launching yet, but can you back us on this? Can you get the word out can you get it retweeted you you guys know as well it's it's not as easy as you think you might have the best product in the world yeah but you've got to get eyes on your product correct and it's getting the eyes on your product then your product will sell itself if it's good enough mm -hmm. yeah yeah i totally agree um that's something that we need to think about too like from our platform's perspective is like some sort of social engagement because you're right. I mean, uh, it's an attention economy, and if you don't have the attention, there's no economy, right? Or the economy's there, yes. but like, yeah. Well, for you. Yeah, yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have, if you can't like get that attention, right? So yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that goes into 
uh, obviously marketing a project, you know, it's just, you literally, there's like multifaceted, right. Where you have to, you have to convey your, what it is you're actually doing from like a technical perspective. If it's like a, like in go see cash's, uh, scenario, there's many different technical aspects to it. Right. But there's also, you have to align, I guess, with the existing ethos of how things are much more like culturally driven. And there's mm -hmm. like a mimetic component kind of like permeating throughout the entire crypto space. Right. We're seeing yeah. it on every chain. Mimetic energy is like the, the, the main way to kind of navigate that attention's gaze on what it is you're trying to build. So yeah. how are you guys approaching this? I guess for both of you guys, you have tokens on the horizon. Um, kind of like, cause you're both essentially utility projects, right? But your, your, your tokens are entering into this market during this stage where the pendulum is in full, like mimetic full. value, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what is your approach as from like a marketing and just like a community onboarding perspective? Well, let me, let me speak about community first. I think our product is something that works for itself. You don't really need to sell it. It's like somebody comes over, tries it once and they're hooked. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I, I feel like it's a self-selling product. All we need to do is get eyes on it. And I think the most important factor that people are forgetting is that arguably I would say that Ethereum was created because Bitcoin lacked the infrastructure to be built upon, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, and now we have that protocol. We have a protocol that builds on L1 Bitcoin. Uh, people don't, they still don't realize how big that is. You know, mm. everybody's invested in memes and all that stuff. But I feel like when the smoke clears, and people actually start looking back at utility, they're going to see where they can invest. And then they'll see Bitcoin is now, you can build upon it. And I feel like this is where Ghosty stands. We, we, we look at Bitcoin, the DeFi and Bitcoin, and we see an open field. Mm. And I like that field. I love it. I feel like I can capture the whole field because there's no one playing. I'm the only one here. And that is something I'm dedicated on. I feel like Ghosty is at the forefront. We had a few projects at the start of last year, if you guys remember during uh, the BRC period mm -hmm. where they yeah. came out with the title uh, DeFi and Bitcoin. But most of those projects are just gone. I think they're just deactive or they're not working on their um, growth anymore. But Ghosty, I think we our ethos has been since day one that we're going to be the king of DeFi and Bitcoin. And that is what I'm going for. I will get that till the end. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's quite huge because if the uh, DeFi and Ethereum is a few billion, right? And DeFi and Bitcoin, no one's looking at it. They all think memes are the go-to thing. But when the volume actually comes here, I'm going to be standing with Ghosty Cash and uh, my community is going to be at the forefront and, hmm. you know, we'll be riding the wave. We'll be leading the wave, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think um, this whole meme pendulum swing has has forced everyone to kind of adjust their, their marketing strategies a little bit. And... Um, and I think a lot of it is 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 because of Murad and his speech, which really changed my opinion on memes. Mm -hmm. uh, I was largely kind of ignoring it just because I saw it as largely a uh, casino. But um, but there's there's some elements about this like meme economy that I, I guess makes sense, especially with like the new entrance into the into the ecosystem by uh, you know new demographics, right? And so. Um, so I think, I think there's, there has to be some sort of adjustment, but ultimately like the pendulum is going to swing back and it's going to be based off like fundamentals and functionality yeah. and utility. Yeah. And even without that pendulum swing, it's still, I think all memes is really amplifying is like the importance of community, right. And nurturing That's right. that. Yeah. So it's tokenized community. Yeah. Yeah. So meme communities in most cases, it's just, it's a hundred percent focus on that end of what it takes to, to kind of breed a successful project. So I guess in a lot of yeah. like developer centric projects that are focused on utility, there's been a large lack of that, like just going throughout like our history, right? A lot of these utility projects, they just, the founders of them aren't in the trenches with their community, right? They're not there communicating with them regularly, yeah. amplifying this mission, this ethos, like everything you just said, right? Like, you have a mission to be uh, the, the front runner of DeFi on Bitcoin. Like that's something I think a lot of people can rally behind, right? Or people yeah. will be willing to go to war with you. However, mm -hmm. I know that's not an easy task, right? You're, you're not saying like, you know, our mission is just to pump a token to go to a billion dollars. have fun. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you have to build a lot of technology in order to like actually execute. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to be attracting a specific demographic of people who are like, you know, willing to, I guess, be in the trenches with you along that, that endeavor. Right. Cause it's, it's, it's challenging, but uh, so to walk us through like what, what in your mind, what, what is it actually going to take to 
again, execute on that vision? Like, what, what are the components of DeFi that, that need to exist for, for this trillion dollars of dormant liquidity that's on Bitcoin yeah. to actually start moving into DeFi? I feel like the way it works is uh, the second Bitcoin breaks out or the second the smoke clears from memes, right? People start looking at utility because they actually want to make money on real world stuff. I feel like as much as we enjoy memes at the moment, we all know that at one point it's going to, the bonding curve, not the bonding curve, sorry, I'm, I'm guessing so many memes, I've forgotten the terms. Uh, the curve is going to come downwards, right? The distribution curve. So when the meme wave ends and people start looking for actual utility, uh, they're going to see stuff like that. They're going to see stuff like Nat. They're going to see all these projects that are uh, what they're about. They're building on L1 Bitcoin. This is like, you know, this is what crypto was found upon. Bitcoin and now people are building on top of it. So that's where they start mentioning and they'll see what what other projects are here. And I think that's where we stand with Bitcoin, DeFi and Bitcoin. We have a product that works. It actually communicates with other chains. It's built on Bitcoin, but actually speaks to other chains, right? I mean, you guys have used Ghost Cash, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you can swap from any chain to any chain. So it's like, it's a gateway to Bitcoin, number one. And then number two, it's built on Bitcoin. So very simply, uh, once people get eyes on the Bitcoin ecosystem, tap and all that stuff, they'll naturally see the projects that are in that ecosystem, which is Ghosty, Cash, Launchpunks, Nat, and all these other projects that are built there. And I think that's where we have to position ourselves. Like We have to sell our idea to the people. We have to give them the vision and make them understand. And if we can't do that by then, then you're going to miss out. And if you can, if you have a community that stands by you, which ours has for a year, uh, if you have people that believe in your product because you you built something that works, then when the time comes, uh, you see your community selling your product for you. You don't have to be one man selling to millions and millions of people. We've actually got an army who's doing that with you, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Earlier, you mentioned KYC and uh, immediately Trump, uh, the president-elect, um, you know, is, is coming into power here pretty soon in a few months. How has uh, the election, because uh, you guys are outside of the United States, how's, how has the United States election affected your perception about crypto and like you know are you more bullish or or what, what's your take it felt like christmas had come early so it was like everything we could dream of is the type of policies and the team he's got behind him on the crypto obviously i don't want to go into the politics that's you know not my country but as um as a president that's going to actually help increase the chances of the us becoming a crypto hub whereas at the moment even the big boys and the little boys are moving away from the us because the regulations do not help it i see trump as being somebody that's going to make it very positive we're looking for to get a european license uh early next year and i've already talked to the people that will be helping us get a european license on what they expect to come from the US. And they do think that the licensing will get easier in the US as well. Mm -hmm. So personally, and everybody I've spoke to in Europe, um, very excited of the times to come with the new president that's coming in. President-elect, I believe you call him. That's right, yeah. Taxman, yeah. what, what do you think? How has, uh, ch how has Trump changed your perception on, on crypto, if anything? All right. Um, as a politician, I don't have any opinions. You know, I don't live in America. I live in London. Uh, but as for crypto, I think I speak for everybody in this sector that um, Trump's perspective on crypto is very bullish for us. You know, we're all here. We all believe in something. And for him to say that he's going to promote it is very important. So thank you for that. And I think the second aspect would be the fact that the U.S., the United States has allowed, has said that they want to be a front runner for crypto. I think it eases the load for all the European countries because you know that's how it works America does something and the Europeans follow mm -hmm. uh, you'll see most of the tax havens right now are like in small countries like Malta and Panama but I believe now that the Amer now that America wants to be the leader I think our country London is going to follow through Germany is going to follow through Italy Italy actually had a news come out two days ago where they said they're going to increase crypto tax to uh 42 percent I believe but they said they're going to keep it at 20 percent so I think you can already see the fallback from that from Tom Trump coming in and saying he wants to be the leader these are all these countries are thinking, hey, you know, this is not something to mess about. But Germany lost $1.3 billion because they sold early. Hmm. Uh, so I think countries are actually starting to see that um, you, this is something that has a value. And if a country like America says that they want to have 1 million Bitcoins, which is about 5% of the supply, uh, 
you should meddle in this thing and not keep it for other countries to uh, benefit off of and just be out of it. I think that is something that European countries, the EU has done uh, throughout the years where they just you know stay out of these things. But I feel like from a financial perspective, it would be very stupid for a country to keep out of crypto when the potential is there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to go back to like the, um, I guess the fundamentals of Ghosty, what you guys are introducing as far as primitives for DeFi and such, because this is a, we really need to like hone in and lock in on like what it is, not just you and what you think other developers in the TAP ecosystem can kind of activate and um, specifically around actually onboarding liquidity and incentivizing with the right mechanics and such and trying not to repeat the same, I guess, errors or mistakes of last cycle. I wouldn't call them mistakes. Every experiment in DeFi is a valid experiment. Yeah, right? learn, but, learn from the last cycle at least. Yeah, but we've identified obviously certain practices that are not sustainable as far as like uh ten thousand percent yields <laughs> yeah things like that right they obviously they, they came and they worked for for a little bit and it definitely brought in a tidal wave of like DeFi liquidity and interest but yeah it d doesn't sustain so according to your thesis like well what is a potential like next generation vector of how do we build out a sustainable DeFi ecosystem on bitcoin I think that would depend on all the projects on uh, Bitcoin that are building for DeFi. I think for Ghosty, since we're a bridging protocol, the, mo the mo main simple point that I focus on is bringing liquidity in, right? Uh, the partners that we have, one of our main partners that we just uh, partner with right now, which is Satspam Fund, they're building mm -hmm. on fractal Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Um, but then we told them uh, some something that's very simple. We will bring the liquidity in, and then from there you take over. You do your thing. So we allow them, allow people to bridge from all these different chains are fractal and then they take it over from there so that's where i stand from the DeFi perspective i will bring people in from other chains to bitcoin the mother chain again and then from there i want people to present their products right like we've got taparu that just came out on tap there's that's a dex yeah. uh we've got satspawn fun which is a pound fun type platform uh we've got launch monk so all these platforms i think the problem the biggest problem that they'll face is liquidity because mm -hmm. when somebody's on sol and tron all these different chains right they don't want to go on bitcoin anymore because you have to buy it from this chain you have to go there and cash out this and that so i think that's where i stand i i'm not saying that i want to take over the entirety of DeFi and bitcoin but i want a portion of it that allows people to come in so anybody that wants to enter the bitcoin ecosystem goes to goes to if that makes sense once they're in here i want the builders that we have already like launch punks and everybody else they build a product that's that works, that's good, and then from there we keep them in the Bitcoin ecosystem. They don't need to go out to other chains, and that I think is the main key point from our perspective. That uh, as Ghosty that we're looking at bringing people in and keeping them here by presenting them projects that are doing something that's actually valuable and adds value to their the tokens that they're holding. So, are you essentially uh, tapping into the existing communities on different chains, and you're saying that with Ghosty Cash, you're, you're just allowing them to have access to say Bitcoin projects and essentially the uh, the desire is that you want them to stay on, on Bitcoin and in that ecosystem. Is that correct? That is correct. So at the moment, I think the main aspect that we explored uh, this year was where we just went crazy and we allowed everybody to chain from every different uh, bridge from every different chain. Right. Uh, so I think people see that there's a work in product. I think the next mm -hmm. step for us is because we are building on Bitcoin. We want to promote Bitcoin. We want to see it grow infrastructure bitcoin projects uh, so we're going to start promoting uh utility token utility on our token and i think when people start seeing that we're actually giving them some of the value that's where we tell them listen we're not the only ones there's a plethora of projects here that are doing the same thing why don't you check them out we will bring you guys in you guys check them out stay on this chain there's no need to go to uh, other cheaper chains this is a mother chain it's what crypto started on and that is i think what our main goal is in uh DeFi as of now uh, we have plans of adding new products in the future, but as of yet, there's no plans for a DEX from Ghost. It's just mainly perfecting the bridge that we have. So, uh, so you you guys are you call yourself Ghosty, and you have a, a token coming out called uh, Spooky, and you have the the Ghosty token as well. Um, do you want to talk about the kind of like the anonymous technology that you have a little bit and and see? Because I remember last time we talked about it. Um, you know, it was like an important piece of like how your existing technology works. Has it evolved at all? Or, um, you know, have you made any changes to that technology and, and any additions? 
Yes, we have. Actually, I think last time we spoke, we were using Monero, right? Mm-hmm. And I think right. one of the main actions, one of the main problems that we faced with that was Monero is very good for anonymous uh, privacy. But the problem is um, the second you mentioned Monero, I think I think if you guys remember Binance delisted Monero at that time. Mm, um, yeah. I think did they uh, someone delisted Monero. I might be wrong. I think it was Binance. Um, but at that time, when you mentioned Monero, there was like a huge, like, you know, a gray area that you're standing on because people are like, you know, why are you using Monero? It's like a league on this and that. So we actually looked for solutions and we found a solution. We found ZK Snarks, right? It's a privacy solution. Again, um, I'm not a technical guy. I'm more on business strategy, but the way it works is it still retains the same privacy as before. No one can peep into your wallet. It only gives information that the receiver wallet needs to see, right? Do you hold them out? Yes, you do. Process the transaction, nothing else. And it's same as before. No one can peep inside. Uh, all the while doing this, we're uh, legally compliant because ZK Snarks are not... not illegal Monero I think was in a gray area where some people were like um it's kind of like it was kind of like becoming like uh tornado cash if that makes sense mm-hmm. everybody who uses Monero is automatically assumed to be a bad person so we I, I mean we don't agree with that but we don't want to be on that side of um the regulators because we do believe in compliance and uh, being legal as we are so in that aspect we just wanted to change things up a bit so all we've done is gone from Monero to ZK Snarks. Our swaps are much faster if you've tried it now because of ZK Snarks. Uh, and our rates are also better. Our UI's changed a little bit. Uh, but those are just some small key things that we've changed uh, UI-wise. Hmm. Yeah, I think using ZK Snarks is uh, kind of a smart move, especially kind of moving away from Monero. And yeah, and Monero does kind of seem like uh, it is being looked at as like a you know, something uh, aligned with Tornado Cash, which which I totally disagree with what happened with Tornado Cash. I, I think there needs to be some uh, technology out there that keeps privacy, right? And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Of course, it can be misused, but there could be like um, methods to allow, you know, a, a compliant person to, to use this privacy technology. And so ZK Snarks, I mean, we have... Uh, Vitalik talking about it, basically everyone on Ethereum talking about ZK Snarks pretty much regularly. So you guys leveraging makes makes a lot of sense. Um, so I guess ultimately, you know, leveraging the, the ghosty cash kind of like platform and you guys have a launch coming up. What are what are like the the main like roadmap initiatives that you have coming up? Uh, so I'll speak on a few things that we have coming up. Uh, I think if you have a look at our roadmap, you will see that we've actually launched Perp Dex. Uh, so it's a perpetual Dex. You can use margins and trade completely decentralized. Uh, I think that was one of the challenges that I faced because I'm a trader, right? That's where I come from, and I like trading Perps. Uh, and the only problem was that the only place I could trade them on was th- that I knew of was exchanges, right? KuCoin. That's what I used. Um, but then again, I, I don't feel comfortable with exchanges anymore. So we actually built a perpetual Dex where you can margin trade completely decentralized. Uh, that's already live. Uh, for the upcoming things, we have something called an anonymous multi sender. I do not think it's been done before. I think we are the first one to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's technically for meme enthusiasts, uh, where let's say you hold, you buy, you buy an early through a bonding curve, whatever, and you hold ten percent of the supply of a token, as an example, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now the problem that we saw a lot of our partners face was that when somebody holds a supply, people watch your wallet with bubble maps and all these things, yeah. and then it becomes a real challenge for you to sell. And we don't believe in that. If you've bought in early, then it's your right to sell whenever you want. And we don't want people to be watching your wallet. So the anonymous multi-sender, what it does essentially is, um, it instead of a multi-sender where you split your tokens and it, it's visible on the bubble map, you can actually make it anonymous. So it uses our core product and you initiate an order and then just split your token and it completely removes all the bubble maps. It just disappears. It's not there anymore. And that allows you to basically take people's eyes off your tokens, right? So if any meme enthusiast, they would know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. the difficulties they face when they're trying to sell or when they're trying to clear out some tokens that people are just like hawks watching them. Uh, that's one of the key aspects that's coming up. Uh, and then we have a Vault NFT. For this one, there is not a lot of information because we're still working on it, but it is kind of like a ledger that moves. Uh, it has about three or four layers of verification security. So biometrics and all that stuff. But let, we'll touch upon this in a future episode, I think, because we're still working on it and it's something that's quite in, exciting. I'll bring my partner on and he'll brush away a bit more. I'm not on the technical side, so I wouldn't know much. Mm-hmm. And then finally, towards the end of the year, we have an L2 side chain coming out, right? So we're speaking to, I don't think I can take their name actually. We're speaking to an L2 provider. Mm-hmm. 
and the plan is to start an L2 and then make Spooky actual official gas token where on every TXO you burn about 8% Spooky. So um, I guess to leverage this technology, you, you are asking users to hold Spooky tokens to, um, to kind of obfuscate you know, what they're doing with their, with their mean tokens, for example. Is that, is that right? That is true. So we believe um, our tokens actually has real value because of the revenue share, right? So we tell people that if you want to use some of our products, then uh, we expect you to hold our token. You can stake it. You can earn money off of it. We're not we're not just saying to stake and buy it and don't hold like stake it. You can do whatever you want. But essentially, we want to put our token at the center of our pro uh, of our products. If that makes sense. So you can you can earn revenue. The uh, token is being burned. If you want to use anonymous functions for some things, we're going to require the token to be held. If you want the VNFT to be functional, you're going to have to have some uh, spooky tokens. Uh, and all these different things. We're, try we're looking at different features to tie in our token. We've also got our few, a few partners that we're speaking to, about five or six, mm -hmm. that have pledged to give us tokens. So everybody that stakes uh, Spooky tokens will be getting tokens from other projects. So we're just going to build as much value as we can for the token, you know? Yeah, do you have a... Uh, so you have uh, the Ghosty token and then the Spooky token that's coming up. Is there some sort of migration or... How, how does the existing Ghosty Cash holders like benefit here? So the Ghosty Cash holders are coming with us. We haven't left anybody behind. Ghosty Cash, as of today, I think 11 a.m. UTC, it was delisted. It's not trading anymore. We took a snapshot and we're given half of our supply to our holders. The other half is going to be used for growth and marketing and exchange and all that stuff. And we've got a big supply and foundation that won't come out for, I believe, uh, a year. So our main goal here being, again, suppressing supply because we believe there's actual value in the token all the while allowing people that stake to be rewarded heavily because they believe in us right staking is essentially you betting on the project that these guys are going to give me something that actually has value right um so ghosty delisted everybody that had ghost uh ghosty tokens has been snapshotted as of 11 o'clock so ghost is not trading anymore and now everybody gets a two to one split and if we move over to spooky we go on exchanges we grow we speak to the calls we do marketing we do all these different things to make sure that Spooky goes out there, the word goes out there, the second more eyes come on, I think it'll sell itself. And that's the idea. Yeah, this is huge because um, anytime you launch a token on Bitcoin, essentially it's it's all practically a, like a fair distribution. And uh, that doesn't lend perfectly to participating in the industry, right? Because a lot of these exchanges need liquidity, they need supply of the tokens, they need all this stuff, and then they need like a, a briefcase full of cash. And so you're not able to do that with a free and fair mint. And uh, and then the community would have to contribute some way and somehow to, to kind of uh, participate in the industry. So so it makes sense what you guys are doing. And um, and uh, the, the utility of the Spooky token, um, you know, it has like this, this ability to kind of contribute, like as far as like liquidity, you, you say you're earning like revenue share. Like it has like all this like functionality that people can take advantage of. So, um, I'm curious, like, you know, what what is the the, the next steps for for I guess uh, launch punks and like getting this thing launched? So, what is it gonna? What's the experience gonna be like on on Monday when people can get access to the spooky token? Well, we um, oh. I mean, Rob, I'll let you take this one. Sorry, any of you? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so um, there'll be um a campaign first, and uh, you need to participate in the campaign to be um eligible for the um allocation lottery uh and then uh when you do win your allocation um if you win uh you will be able to pay with ghosty cash right in the site oh, you okay. take that in okay cool and uh yeah this um we've got we've got a few things planned for distribution one one of um one of the features that we have in the pipeline is um we'll be able to uh, whitelist people and uh, for a privilege of inscription so It'll be like a sort of whitelisted mint, basically. So um, uh, you will be able to mint your own tokens, um, like a, that's a traditional sort of Bitcoin token, um, ordinals token. But uh, you know we can get keep that access. So um, if you wanted to launch a token, um, you know you can collect revenue for that. You don't have to just give it away. Interesting. Yeah. So um, I, I guess talk about. If if there's going to be a migration from Ghosty to Spooky, you you guys are accepting Ghosty to uh, for for uh, this like token generation event. Uh, we're we're um we've incorporated Ghosty payments. 
Oh, that's we've cool. integrated that. So you'll be able to they, use your ghosted product to yeah to pay for your ghosted for your spooky tokens. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the ghost API plugged in, so you can actually use any of the big. You could use Ethereum, Bitcoin. You could use stable coins. So when you win an allocation, mm -hmm. that you know, Ghosty Cash has got such good features. You can come to our platform and actually do the final payment with a MetaMask and do the payment. Um, on the back end, the project always gets stable coins because, like you said, um, when Ghosty Cash need to go and pay for something with the money they've raised, they can't be open to the fluctuations in the market because if you accepted Bitcoin as a project, even though we all appreciate that it's going to go up, it could also go down before you've actually got the money in your hand as a project. Right. So we're not actually expect um, accepting that old token. We're just using ghosty cash features, the actual payment method. I see. I see. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, tax man, I have a question for you. So uh, there's a uh, 50% of all the fees are, are, are coming from, or are going to be distributed to stakers of the spooky token. Um, are you particularly staking the spooky token for liquidity or is it sort of like a, a lockup period just to lock the tokens and in exchange for the 50% of all the fees or is there some sort of DeFi, you know, additional DeFi mechanism to, to staking here? No, I think it's a pretty basic um, staking term. We've got our own staking uh, contracts and everything. We're not using a third party. But the main idea being that if you believe in the product and if you believe that the revenue is going to be beneficial, you can stake your token and earn passive income, right? Uh, we actually passed our micro regulations, which is something that's in the EU. Um, you need to be compliant. You can't be a security. So it's more of a uh, where spooky is something that you like and you think can bring value. So you just buy it, you stake it, you earn your money from it every month and you go play somewhere else, right? Mm. So it's not like we want you to stake and uh, we want to pump our bags while you're staked and you're doing nothing. It's like you stake our token, you believe in us and we'll pay you the reward for that. Very simply. Okay. What about uh, Vault NFTs? You want to talk about that? Vault NFTs are still being constructed, but what I can tell you in a very simple word, just to keep it a bit spicy, is that I don't think it's been done before. I think this is the first of its kind. It's kind of like a vault that holds everything you own, right? All your assets, your NFTs, everything you own. Uh, if I send you that NFT, then you become the legal owner of it and you own it. You can do whatever you want. You can access it, right? Hmm. Um, but the key thing here being that if somebody, somebody wants to hack into it or break into it and get your stuff out, there is virtually a very, very impossibly small chance of them doing that. Uh, it's secured by biometrics. It's secured by email, uh, email passwords, your phone password, uh, and then actual password, uh, seed phrase, mnemonic phrase, all these things. So there's multiple aspects. So the key thing being, if you want to secure your asset, you lock it up. And every time you want to cash out, right, you have to do your steps, obviously. But the key aspect being that you know you're safe. You, you know that if you don't, if your hardware wallet is broken, if you don't have access to your seed, it's not gone. It's always there. It's connected to your emails and stuff. And there's ways of backing it up as well. Um, it's still being constructed. So I don't want to speak up too much about it because we're changing a few things mm -hmm. here and there. But I think it is very exciting. And for it to be functional, we do require you to hold some spooky. Okay. Uh, so again, if you want to make use of it, you'll need to, you know, show support on that end. So I guess the Vault NFTs is it's primarily for just securing your assets, not necessarily uh, like a mechanism to to be able to like, like it's not a wallet that you're supposed to use on on a regular basis. Is that correct? It's going to have integrated swaps, actually. Integrated so see, swaps. this is where my partner would be a bit useful because it's it's got a lot of features that he knows about. So sure. it's going to have. Uh, a storing function like a vault, and then it's going to have a swapping function, which is going to be like, you could say like Uniswap integrated. Actually, I think it is Uniswap that's integrated and Jupiter, I believe, Iridium, oh. sorry. So they're going to be integrated in the wallet itself and you can just trade on. It's, it's kind of like a le moving ledger, like I said. You can do all your trading and everything in the wallet and it's connected to third-party platforms uh, that are also functional within the wallet. You never need to go out of it. And then on top of that, you can whitelist tokens so, you know, you'll see people sending you weird tokens and uh, sending you 0 0.001 of some phishing token, right? So that can't happen here. Uh, you can whitelist tokens. If you want to get only Tron, only Bitcoin, only Ethereum, you can whitelist those. So uh, hmm. if somebody tries sending uh, 
assets to your wallet, it wouldn't accept it. It, hold, it would hold it, it would freeze it because it's not whitelisted, right? And it'd notify you that somebody's trying to do this. But the whitelisted ones, they can freely enter your address because um, that's the one you've allowed to come in. That's interesting. So, so it does. So, is it like a, a public address that you can sort of like control what what comes in? Is that how it works? I believe it is. It is something of that sort. Again, I'm not a technical guy, so hmm. I would need to get more information on it. But it's something that's very exciting uh, when it's ready. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see how, how this works. Um, so definitely whenever this is ready, this is probably another time to, to hop on another podcast to kind of discuss because it's pretty interesting how, how this can work. We actually had, a, I think, our entire dev team working on this for about three months. They were going back and forth, and yeah. it, it's got a, a lot of code uh, and smart contracts and stuff like that. But, you know, with our devs, they usually build stuff in like two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. But this took them months. So I'm, I'm very confident there's going to be something that's going to be game changing uh but let's see how it goes when it comes out and, and typically when, when you mention smart contracts i mean t you know we come from a background on on ethereum so we automatically default to ethereum because today there's all kinds of like smart contract platforms but when you say smart contract do you also refer to ethereum yes i think in this case we do refer to ethereum because uh the versatility of ethereum is needed in this case yeah uh, i think Bitcoin still doesn't have uh that sort of versatility in smart contracts so in this case, yes, we do refer to Ethereum. Do you have any uh, aspirations to do an L2? We do, actually. We are starting an L2 Q3 of next year. Um, okay. We're still to a few providers, infrastructure providers that can help us with that. But the plan is to make Ghost into actual, like, you know, functioning L2 where it can basically live off of the spooky token. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal. Um just because on on an L two, you, uh, you you guys have pretty much all, most of the primitives to kind of support like an L two environment, and so sort of porting that over seems to make a lot of sense. And then the whole idea of an L two is it provides a better user experience. Of course, exactly. Yeah, is this going to be an EVM L two or uh, how is the? Did you know the uh, architecture of it? Is it still like in an early stage of development? What, what, what more details can you give? The, I'll tell you, I think, I think I can mention this. The infrastructure provider we spoke to was Anchor Network. Uh, so uh, I think it is going to be based on F. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, Benny announced a partnership with Anchor, right? If that's the same yeah, Anchor you're referring they, to. They did recently have a partnership with Anchor Network as well. Yeah, it's the, it's the same Anchor you're referring to, right? Yep, okay. that is the one. <laughs> All right, now we're starting to connect the pieces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. So how soon but I don't think we knew about our partnership. We spoke to Anchor, I think, long before Tab did, because we were exploring our uh, the idea of our own L2. Sure. Uh, we were the ones that spoke a few months back, I think nine months ago. Uh, we actually had the talk with them, and they were like, we can do this. It's, it looks quite like you know bullish as well for us. It's something that we're going to work on, especially when they saw our core product. They was like, they're like, they said we haven't seen this before. Mm -hmm. So they're quite, they were quite eager to do it. Yeah, I mean, Anchor's, Anchor's huge. They, they're a huge infrastructure play in all kinds of fronts. I remember talking to uh, some of the founders there um, because they wanted to support the metaverse and they have like all these like GPU like rigs just sitting around and they're, they're looking for ways to leverage them. So it makes a lot of sense that, you know, an L2 play on top of Anchor makes like the infrastructure makes sense. So in this L2 ecosystem that you guys are kind of envisioning, is this... Kind of like an app chain environment essentially for the ghosty ecosystem or is this like a, something where general purpose yeah like third party developers will come in to kind of like extend more functionality uh within that or what do you guys plan to third party developers and that's what the conversation was like last time i spoke to my partner uh we want to let people build i feel like there's a lot of builders that have crazy ideas and you know ghosty came from a crazy idea we just uh, had a dream and we executed and it worked so I think with that same aspect, there's a lot of people that want to build on an L2, but because nowadays there's a lot of restrictions, right, on L2, if people don't let you build on it, there's, they have this restriction, that restriction. So um, we do want to allow people that have a brain like ours, that want to go crazy with it, to come in, talk to us, see what they want to build, and then let them go crazy and see what they come up with. So an ecosystem for DeFi, you could say. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how soon after the token is deployed will these like staking uh uh 
come online essentially for the uh, holders of the token. Q4 is when our staking comes online, which is, uh, I think the latest is January. So we're just ramping things up, testing it out, you know how it goes. And then yeah. uh, once the end of Q4 comes out and people start to get their tokens, we're just going to go apply for the staking. And um, But we do have something before that I don't want to mention at the moment. Uh, but the people that have migrated to Spooky, the ghosty holders, they are getting something uh, juicy, very juicy, just for them, nobody else. Uh, and then Q4 is where the staking goes live, yes. Awesome. All right, well, we have a few more minutes. Uh, Taxman, do you want to... I guess talk about like the final takeaways, uh, what to expect on Monday and kind of like the, uh, the next, um, I guess, expectations for, for spooky, uh, token holders, uh, coming up here in this, uh, in like after Monday, I, I should say. Yeah, sure. So I, when Monday comes generally, I would like to see our community assist in every way they can, uh, because you've actually moved ourselves away from VCs, right? We had a heavy VC around there going forward, but most of the people, they actually, backed out when they saw our tokenomics because they favored our community a lot and you know it was a bit hard when you're that small and you need capital to grow For sure. uh but still we said that we don't want to you know we don't want to backstab the people that bought us here right because if these people didn't swap if this tvs didn't reflect millions uvcs wouldn't be talking to us today mm -hmm. so we actually gen generally just pushed them away and said we'll do our own thing so that's where we took a chance and we said we're going to go on a launch pad we're going to raise whatever we need and then we'll go from there so i'd like to see our horrors our holders be um, helping us on Monday, if that if that makes sense. Maybe get an allocation, bring your friends in, show them what Ghost is about, uh, and let's ride together. And then I think post Monday when we teach E, which is going to be this month, I'm hoping as well. Uh, let's just ride it together and see how it goes. Uh, things are going to ramp up fast. You know, the bull runs on. Uh, eyes are coming back on Ordi as well, which means people are going to see more BRCs and TAP and all that stuff. So I think the main thing is for us to just make sure that when the eyes do come on, we have our community with us uh, to push the narrative and push what Ghosty is doing, basically. Spooky is doing, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, and Rob and Mark, um, since Ghosty Cash is going to be launching uh, uh, first on LaunchPunks, um, you know, I, I guess how, how does like one, you know, engage with you guys to launch their own fungible token? Like how, how does the, that process work? Um, you just contact us. <laughs> We've got, um, I think there's something, there's a contact us on the, um, on the app. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of reaching out at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah. On, on the, um, if you go onto our main website, which is on our Twitter, uh, there's a form you can fill in to contact us. And that can be anything from marketing proposals, community um, interaction. So say somebody from one of your uh, DMT projects wants to communicate with us and help uh, get the projects together and basically sharing the community, they can do it on there. Um, a lot of the TAP projects we already know uh, they've already got our connections and we're not open. We'll do different types of raises as well. So if you didn't want to do any VC whatsoever, which we already have a project in the pipeline, brilliant project. Um, they don't want any VC involvement whatsoever. So it'll be a bigger community raise. Um, but the community then will also know that we'll make sure that somewhere there's some liquidity locked up. So there is a secondary market. So, um, yeah, anybody wants to. One thing I will say is what we're implementing as well for the ghosty community is when the snapshot was taken, we received all the Bitcoin wallet addresses. So anybody that is part of that community in that snapshot, when they come to our platform, they will automatically have extra points than anybody else that has just started. We also run a marketing campaign a few months ago. Anybody that participated in that, they will receive a few points as well. So again, we're rewarding communities. Um, we do want to have a chat with you guys and see if there's any particular community you want. It's not whitelisting, it's just giving some extra points. But all of these communities on the first day will have a few little extra points and everybody else but they'll get to take that through the entire lifespan of LaunchPunks. So we're, we're happy to onboard any other people's communities. 
if they want to help us grow, we'll help them grow. Um, the TAP ecosystem is small. We all know each other. Anybody wants to reach out, they can come through you. They can just come to our Telegram and talk to us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's that's a good message to kind of like uh, end this on. And uh, yeah, so if anyone wants to have access to like Ghosty Cash and and uh, launch punks and you for some reason you can't reach out to them definitely reach out to us and we'll, we'll get you guys connected um yeah definitely interested to see more projects emerge for sure it's something that's sorely needed within the, the tap ecosystem yeah and again it's like something to distinguish against like well, everything else that's happening within bitcoin i mean I, i'm sure like a meme coin could e launch as well on tap to yeah. launch punks right like the, 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 the spectrum of project it could be essentially it's it's yeah. whatever right it doesn't it's just not locked into like it has yeah. to be this highly technical thing yeah correct right correct yeah yeah i mean we've been focusing on user experience and not and hiding all of that complexity from the user mm -hmm. so when, when people come to a launch pad on bitcoin you know we want it to be um easier and more pleasing to use as well yeah we were we were on a on a call with with you guys uh launch punks and you guys showed showed us the the interface and it was pretty Pretty simple to use and uh, i want to add that the that i really like the art that you have on there so mm. I, I think your style is like really um kind of matches the uh the cyberpunk or cypherpunk kind of ethos so you guys are doing a great job on on like the the style and design and everything cool thank you yeah we appreciate that rob used to be a punk i think that's what it were oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome all right, guys. Um, yeah, we'll end it here. I appreciate you guys for for joining the call and uh, you know telling us about launch punks and the, the launch happening on Monday with Ghosty Cash. Uh, I guess for everyone watching, the links will be in the description. I appreciate you guys for for showing up as well, and uh, we will catch you in the next podcast. Peace.